Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. I started in discussion on EPS spectroscopy from my previous lecture. So, let me continue from where I had stopped. ESR or EPR measures the transition between the electron spin energy levels. So, transition induced by the appropriate frequency of radiation and required frequency of radiation depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. As we increase the magnetic field, what happens? The energy gap between the nuclear spin steadily increases and if you go for higher field strength magnetic field, then higher microwave radiation is required to achieve the transition. So, common field strengths are anywhere between in the range of 0.34 to 1.24 tesla, this is about magnetic field B and then 9.5 and 35 gigahertz is the microwave region okay, between 9.5 to 35 gigahertz is the microwave region that is used that is applied in a direction perpendicular to the applied magnetic field to perform transition of electron spins. And this is how the typical EPR instrument looks like. This is the magnetic field and the sample is kept here and the signals will go to the detector and then that goes to the plotter for plotting the spectrum. So, how does the spectrometer work can be seen here. This is the source and this is the detector is there and sample cavity is here and this is the electromagnet and phase sensitive detector is here and modulation input comes from this part here. So, that means the radiation source usually uh, used is called clustron. Clustron are vacuum tubes known to be stable high power microwave sources which have low noise characteristics and thus give high intensity. That is the reason we use this source of microwave radiation uh, called clistron. The sample is placed in a resonant cavity in between the magnets I showed you which admits microwaves through an iris. The cavity is located in the middle of the electromagnet and helps to amplify the weak signals from the sample. And most of the external components such as the source, detector are contained within the microwave bridge control. Additionally, the other components such as attenuator, field modulator, amplifier also included to enhance the performance of the instrument. So, EPR spectrometers typically use electromagnets and the microwave absorption is monitored as the field is varied. When an electron is placed within an applied magnetic field B0, the two possible spin states of the electrons would have different energies. In the absence of magnetic field, the spin states would have the same energy, but the moment it is electron is placed in a magnetic field they possess two different energies. The low energy state occurs when the magnetic moment of the electron is aligned with the magnetic field and a higher energy state where m is aligned against the magnetic field. So, that means when the spin is aligned against the magnetic field will be having here plus half. In case of NMR, the one that is aligned with the magnetic field would have lowest energy that is to be plus half whereas here opposite of that one comes here. The lowest energy in case of NMR is plus half and higher energy is minus half in case of NMR. So, here it is opposite. So, the two states are labeled by the projection of the electron spin ms on the direction of the magnetic field where ms equals minus half is the parallel state and ms half is the anti parallel state. So, this is actually aligned in this direction whereas this one is aligned in this direction here. Whereas here this is aligned in this direction and this is aligned in a direction opposite to the applied magnetic field and that is shown here. And of course, plus half we can see in this direction and, and this minus half is in this direction. And again it is always uh, convenient to compare these two methodologies NMR and EPR. Similar to NMR, EPR can be used to identify the geometry of a molecule through its magnetic moment and the difference in electron and nucleus mass and EPR is mainly used to use it for the detection and study of free radical species either in testing or analytical experiments. Spin labeling species of chemicals can be 
a powerful technique for both quantification and investigation of otherwise invisible factors that you cannot really detect using other methods. The EPR spectrum of a free electron shows only one line, single peak, whereas that of the hydrogen displays two lines, two peaks due to the interaction between the nucleus and the unpaired electron. This is called hyperfine splitting. So that means these electrons uh, with spin half and minus half can also interact with nuclear spin and the lines can be further split and this we call it as hyperfine splitting. In NMR we call it as coupling, spin-spin coupling. The distance between two lines is called hyperfine splitting constant A and then we call coupling constant in case of NMR spectroscopy. By using the simple 2Ni plus 1 rule, number of hyperfine lines of a multiplet of a EPR transition can be calculated where n is number of spin and i is the number of equivalent nuclei. For example, for nitroxide radicals, the nuclear spin of 14n is 1. So, n equals 1 and i equals 1. Therefore, 2Ni plus 1 if you see, we get 3 lines here. That means, EPR transition for a nuclear spin equals 1 consists of a triplet. To observe microwave, there must be unpaired electrons in the system. That means, of course, only when we have an unpaired electron or a radical species that we subject for EPR study. So, to observe microwave, there must be unpaired electrons in the system. In a diamagnetic system or having no unpaired electrons, no EPR signals will be observed as there will be no resonant absorption of microwave energy. That means, EPR cannot be used for diamagnetic species. And molecules such as NO, NO2, O2 do have unpaired electrons in ground state and EPR can also be performed on proteins with paramagnetic ions such as Mn2+, Fe3+, and copper 2+, and other relevant uh, transient metal ions. Additionally, molecules containing stable nitroxide radicals, nitroxide radicals such as 2266-tetramethyl-1-pridinyl oxyl that is called TEMPO and ditertiary butyl nitroxide radical. Now, let us look into the energy levels associated with these two spins. For a molecule with one unpaired electron in a magnetic field, the energy states of the electron can be defined as this one. So, E equals G mu B B naught M S that is equal plus or minus half G mu naught B naught. So, where G is the proportionality factor, we call it as G factor and M B is the Bohr magneton. B is the applied magnetic field and M s is the electron spin quantum number. The two spin states have the same energy when there is no applied magnetic field. That means E equals 0 in the absence of magnetic field. The energy difference between the two spin states increases linearly with increasing magnetic field strength. So, the energy gap is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field strength. So, we talk about proportionality constant. What is this one? This is measured from the center of the signal. For a free electron, this is 2.00232, that is G. For organic radicals, typically close to free electron value of 1.99 to 2.01. For transition metal compounds, large variations due to spin orbit coupling and zero field splitting 1.4 to 3.0 is observed. Okay. Now, let us look into the techniques that are employed in EPR spectroscopy and of course, we know this energy difference between the two states even given by H nu equals G beta B naught. This can be recorded either by varying H nu the micro frequency or B naught. Usually, B naught is varied at a constant microwave frequency. So, microwave frequency is kept constant and magnetic field strength is varied in case of EPR technique. And here, in case of X band EPR, typical magnetic field strength is 3000 Gauss and the new is 8398 gigahertz or H nu equals 9 gigahertz. And in case of Q band, the magnetic field strength is 12500 Gauss and H nu equals 35 gigahertz. And in case of W band EPR, H nu equals 90 gigahertz and B naught equals 3.5 Tesla or 35000 Gauss. And you can see here in this one E versus B naught, you can see steadily the values increasing when you go from X band to W band because of increasing the overall magnetic field strength. Of course, if the magnetic field strength is increasing, 
obviously the energy required to excite change the nuclear or to observe a spin transition microwave radiation also energy also increases. So, this gives a correlation between various bands and the corresponding microwave frequency employed in various EPR methods where we are using X band, Q band or W band. And then if you look into the spin states, energy of an electron in a magnetic field is denoted by mu B naught and then of course, I already referred to this uh, equation here mu equals g b m s and beta equals e h o 4 pi m c e is charge of electron and negative for electron and beta is negative for electron atomic unit of magnetic moment is called Bohr magneton and e can be simplified as e equals g beta m s b naught and then of course s can have plus and m s can have plus or minus half when m s equals minus half the expression this is the expression and when m s equals plus half this is the expression here. So, this becomes something like this. As I said in the magnetic field they will be aligned and opposing the applied magnetic field this is the low energy one minus half and this is the high energy one plus half and then if we consider here the corresponding energy is also m i and m s is also shown here and this is the energy gap between these two is represented by this term this is what is shown here. And a typical EPR spectra can look like here number of peaks in the absorption curve equals number of maximum or minimum in the derivative curve. So, that means when you look into a typical EPR spectrum you should observe the number of peaks in the absorption curve is equal to number of maximum or minimum in the derivative curve. You can consider the maximums or minimums they will be essentially same. This absorption intensity when you look into it this is absorption curve it looks like that and this is B naught and this is A versus B naught is given. The first derivative of the absorption intensity is represented by this one. This is how you can see a derivative curve. And again proportionality factor is measured from the center of the signal for a free electron G equals 2.00232 for organic radicals typically close to free electron value that is between 1.99 to 2.01. For transient metal compounds large variation is observed due to spin orbit coupling and also larger variation is spin orbit coupling also observed as a result what happens and plus zero field splitting also we come across as a result the range is 1.4 to 3.0. Now, let us look into few examples here. So, even number of protons or neutrons here 0. So, you do not observe any EPR signals for those which have no unpaired electrons. For example, 12 carbon I equals 0, 4 helium 0, 16 oxygen 0 you do not see. And if you have odd number of protons or neutrons integral spin for example, 2 H 14 N 10 B I equals 1 and here in case of 10 B I equals 3 and 11 B I equals 3 by 2. Odd mass even that means even or odd combination we have these things half integral spin. This is very similar this is about nuclear spin I am talking about. And then if we look into different main group elements and then the isotopes we have for these and also the spin abundance and also how many EPR lines are expected is given in this table. For example, H if we consider we are considering 1 as well as 2 that means hydrogen as well as deuterium and then in case of hydrogen plus half is there in case of deuterium plus 1 is there. So, this is 0 0.015 percent abundance and then we can see in case of first one 2 lines in case of the deuterium we see 3 lines in uh, EPR spectrum and in case of carbon we have 12 carbon and 13 carbon 12 carbon shows no signal I mean I equals 0 and whereas in case of 13 C we have I equals half this constitutes about 1.1 percent and in case of 1 we get only one line because 2 Ni plus 1 if you take plus this whole term will be 0 so 1 will be there and in case of half we get 2 lines. And in case of nitrogen we have both 14 n and 15 n, 14 n has I equals 1 and in case of 15 n we have half that is only about 0 0.4 percent. So, we get 3 lines and 2 lines respectively in case of 14 n and 15 n and in case of oxygen we have 16, 17 and 18 and 16, 0. 
and in case of 17 we have 5 by 2 0 0.04 percent and 18 can be ignored. So, in case of 5 by 2 we get 6 lines 2 n i plus 1 if we use here 2 into 1 we get 6 lines here and in case of uh, 0 we get simply 1 line. In case of f only one isotope is there 19 f y equals uh, half. So, we get 2 lines and similarly in case of 31 p also 100 percent abundant 31 p isotope we get uh, spin is half and we get 2 lines. In case of sulfur we have 3 isotopes 32, 33, 34 again 32 has spin i equals 0 and whereas 33 and 34 have 3 by 2 that constitute about 0 0.8 percent. So, in case of 32 we get 1, in case of 33 or 34 we get 4 lines in EPR spectrum. And in case of chlorine we have 2 isotopes 35 and 37 both have 3 by 2 and in both the cases we get 4 lines. And in case of arsenic we have 75 is the only 75 is the isotope have 3 by 2 value and we get 4. And in case of selenium we have several isotopes 76, 77, 78, 80, 82 and 76 is 0 and others have half spin value and that constitute about 0 0.76 that is uh, 77. So, we see 1.1 and 4 lines. Again in case of bromine very similar to chlorine we have 2 isotopes 79 and 81 both have I equals 3 by 2 and we see 4 lines here. And in case of iodine again 127 we have 5 by 2 spin we see 6 lines here. And similarly we can have a table for uh, uh, transient metals also. If you consider vanadium in plus 4 state isotope 51 and uh, spin is 7 by 2. So, we get 8 lines in EPR spectrum. In case of manganese 2 plus 55 isotope 5 by 2 is the spin i value and we get 6 lines here. In case of iron, iron 3 we have 54, 56, 57, 58, 54 has 0 spin and whereas 56 and uh, 57 can show half there is about 2 percent. So, we see uh, 2 lines whereas in case of 0 we get only 1 line here. And in case of cobalt we have 2, cobalt 2, 59 isotope 7 by 2 we see again 8 lines here. And in case of nickel we have nickel 3 as well as nickel 1 again 58 is 0. In case of uh, 62, 62 and 64 we see constitute only about 1 percent and we see 3 by 2, 4 lines there is about 0.25 percent. And in case of copper 2, we have 63, 65 and again spin 3 by 2, we observe 4 lines. In case of molybdenum in plus 5 state, 92, 94 to 98 and 100 and 92 is 0. And in case of other one, we see 5 by 2 is about 25 percent and uh, constitutes and whereas we see 6 lines only in case of 4 percent. And here tungsten also very similar. 5 oxygen state 180, 182 to 184 and 186 again uh, 14 percent has half and other one is 0. So, what we see is we see about 1 and 2 lines and that is about 97 percent. Now, let us look into hyperfine interaction like spin spin splitting in case of NMR that is very similar here. In addition to the applied magnetic field, unpaired electrons are also sensitive to their local environments. Frequently the nuclei of the atoms in a molecule or complex have a magnetic moment which produces a local magnetic field at the electron. The resulting interactions between the electrons and the nuclei is called as hyperfine interaction. Because of the induced magnetic field generated at electrons and other nuclei surrounding the nuclei we are considering, we see spin-spin coupling. So, here in a similar way this is the interactions between the electrons and the local magnetic field generated either independently or depending on the applied magnetic field. So, that results in the further splitting of the line this we call it as hyperfine interaction. So, that means here the resulting interaction between the electron and the nuclei is what decides the number of lines in the hyperfine interaction. So, number of lines again is given by 2 n i plus 1 n number of equivalent nuclei and i equals spin value. The relative intensities of the lines is determined by the number of interacting nuclei. So, same thing in case of NMR as well. So, for example, if you consider here we have half and minus half uh, minus half and plus half here and 
they further interact and then nucleus with spin half to give four lines like this here. So, now let us look into hyperfine splitting with the different nuclei having a nuclear spin and also how many such nuclei are there. For example, when no interaction is there here, so we see single peak for one unpaired electron. When the interaction with nucleus with I equals half, one nucleus with I equals half, when it interacts, it splits into uh, two lines. And then when this electron interacts with the nuclear spin I equals one, this will be three lines here. And then in case of nuclear spin I equals three by two, there will be four lines, four lines. And then two equivalent nuclei with I equals half, we will see again three lines and then three equivalent nuclei with I equals half, we will see uh, four lines and then four equivalent nuclei with I equals one, you can see nine lines will be there, two and nine plus one, two into four. So, we will see nine lines here. So, this gives some idea about hyperfine splitting. So, let me take some specific examples in my next lecture and then continue discussion on uh, EPR spectroscopy. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.